Welcome to another edition of The Deadly Experiment, all of you in TV land. This is your host and producer, Rick Adams, coming to you as uh, the year of 2018 for those who will be hopefully viewing this again more than one time. As you know, in the last year, in the last part of that year, we were rerunning some of the most, uh, I thought, effective programs that we could have. The Lord had shown us the programs that should be aired at this time and giving you an opportunity to prepare for the times that we live in, getting worse and worse, and winding up, of course, in the false Jesus appearing in the city of Jerusalem and where he wants to rule the world, he and his children in the city of Jerusalem. I want to make it very clear that some of these programs that we have repeated are done for that reason, so that new audiences all the time see and hear our programs on local public access television on the stations you're watching. Remember, we're not on high def, we're on low def. So interstate connections are channels 13 Cox and 32 Verizon. And we are seen in the North Providence and Providence County areas of Rhode Island on local access stations. So just in case you're wondering, we're not up on uh, the scale over a thousand, okay? We're at channel 13 and that's, and that's where we are. Not 1300, 13 Cox and 32 Verizon. Well, folks, as we bring you these next couple of programs in sequence, hopefully, we're going to be exposing before your very eyes more and more of how the media, that is the national, international corrupt media, which rules over America and much of the world, though there are independent voices outside of this country, how they can concoct not only just distort the news and corrupt the news and make it to none effect, but actually invent the news, create false incidents, create false studies, false uh, uh, accusations and so forth, working directly with Intel or deep state, whichever term you like. That is the super, super secret bowels of the governments of the nations of the world, meaning the United States, the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, and other agencies agencies under the authority of Homeland Security particularly. Homeland Security was created after the hoaxes and lies of the 9-11 attacks to give the United States government a surveillance state in America as never before and to push America overseas into other countries' business, particularly in the Middle East, for the benefit of those who were directly involved in the attacks on 9-11, the Likud party, particularly in the state of Israel, the city of Jerusalem. Mark that down. Homeland Security, FBI, CIA, it doesn't matter which, inside or outside the circumstance of, of the Homeland Security Department. There is a direct link from uh, the Homeland Security Department to the state of Israel. And I mean link. Another number of false flag attacks, a number of psyops that we've seen. Sandy Hook, which was a major hoax, now has been exposed thoroughly by some who have brought to the attention of the media a lawsuit brought in the state of Florida against Mr. Halbert, Wolfgang Halbert, who was a security officer, an ex-policeman, who challenged the whole theory about Sandy Hoax or Sandy Hook in the state of Connecticut, was sued by one of those Posners, that is Mr. Posner himself, who supposedly lost his daughter there. And so the lawsuit never progressed because Mr. Posner would not pursue it. And the judge in the case in Florida said, either you show up and you prosecute and we'll see the civil lawsuit or we will not. Another postponement, another postponement. Well, you know, the case eventually was thrown out. Why? Because Mr. Posner, who alleges that his daughter perished at Sandy Hook Elementary School in that alleged massacre, guess what? He didn't show up. His attorney showed up for him, a young upstart who couldn't even file a case properly, which means the case was totally negated, which means that this ex-policeman, who was a hero in the American public, Wolfgang Halbert, exposed the entire falsity and the total illogic of Sandy Hook because he was in security most of his adult life. Guess what? 
press releases were issued to the effect and nobody in the establishment corrupt media would dare to cover it. Which proves the point that the media are totally corrupt in America today. What you see on TV, the old saying, seeing is believing, don't believe it. Because so much of it now is totally scripted, totally concocted through computer graphic imagery and also through the imagery that we have in audio reproduction and psyoping. So that we have deep state, highly advanced technical computer generated programming and imagery that can create a scene and people at that scene who were never at that scene. Did you hear what I just said? Remember that. So we're dealing with deception as never before. As we near the end of this earth and heaven age, we are seeing grand deceptions leading up to what? The greatest deception of all is when Jesus Christ, the false Jesus, comes first to heal the nations of the world. And where will he sit ruling? In the city of Jerusalem. That's God's city, not Satan's city. Currently, it's occupied by those who call themselves Jews and are not, but do lie and are of the synagogue of Satan. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2, 9 and Revelation chapter 3, 9. I know the blasphemy of they who call themselves Judah and are not, but do lie. So they've prepared now with Mr. Trump's announcement and the only major campaign promise that he really has fulfilled to outside sources, that is the state of Israel and its lobby, to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of those who call themselves Jews and moving the United States embassy in Israel to that city. This is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, my friends. Before our very eyes, the end of this age is coming. False Jesus comes first. He comes to heal the nations, but it won't be a real healing. He murders two witnesses. The government of the synagogue of Satan murders the two witnesses sent back from God, Elijah and Moses, to witness to that city. And they are killed in the streets of that city, this man of peace, supposedly. Their bodies lie there for three, three and a half days, as Jesus was in the earth three days. Friends, God's numbers, God's Bible is absolutely perfect. It's like reading tomorrow's newspaper. Before we start our first video presentation on media corruption and lies, and how you'll never believe anything you see again in the media after you see these programs. Isaiah chapter 3, the prophet Isaiah, one of my favorites, one of the great prophets of all time. Chapter 3 and in verse 4. And I will give children to be their princes, babes, that is little babies, shall rule over them. Who? My people. Aren't we seeing that today? with Gina Raimondo, this governor, and governors to come, if in fact we do see another election before the end of this year. Friends, we've got the worst possible people ruling over us, and you're complaining. Why are you complaining? God said he put them there. He put the leaders in control of our nation, of our government, of this region. They're in there because God put them there as what? judgment upon a sinful world, a world that has rejected him and instead chosen Satan and his children. Right now, it's time for the first portion, this video this week on this program, showing exactly how corrupt the media are. Let's roll them. Terrific. Okay, Lindsay. An ABC News producer is being investigated by the network after reported evidence that a live camera shot on Good Morning America was doctored by falsely stringing police tape in the background. The shot featured reporter Lindsay Davis in Woodruff, South Carolina, where a woman was allegedly held captive in a storage container by a registered sex offender. Behind Davis, yellow police tape can be seen with the words, Sheriff's line do not cross. A wider photograph of the scene shows that police tape was actually just attached to some ABC camera equipment to enhance the scene. Dateline NBC, a primetime news program, airs a story in 1992 entitled, Waiting to Explode. The story includes footage demonstrating that a line of trucks produced by General Motors readily explode on impact. 
To see for ourselves what might happen in a side impact crash, Dateline NBC hired the Institute for Safety Analysis to conduct crash demonstrations. Unlike GM tests, the fuel tanks were filled with real gasoline. Look what happened. At impact, a small hole was punctured in the tank. According to our experts, the pressure of the collision and the crushing of the gas tank forced gasoline to spew from the gas cap. The fuel then erupted into flames when ignited by the impacting car's headlight. After the program airs, one of the firemen at the taping of the crash contacts GM. The conversation inspires a full-scale investigation. Three months later, NBC is forced to reveal their role in fabricating the news. NBC's contractor did put incendiary devices under the trucks to ensure that there would be a fire if gasoline were released from the truck's gas tank. We said the crash, quote, forced gasoline to spew from the fuel cap, end quote. GM says since the gas cap was the wrong cap for the GM filler tube and because the gas tank was overfilled, the cap came off when the impact occurred. We agree with GM that we should have told our viewers about these devices. The Dateline reporter, however, said, quote, at impact, a small hole was punctured in the tank, unquote. GM has now x-rayed that tank and found no hole. We acknowledge the placing of the incendiary devices under the truck was a bad idea from start to finish. That's our new policy, and we'll be right back. What Fox Television told us was that we were just the people to be the investigators. Do any stories you want, ask tough questions, and get answers. So I thought, this is great. This is a dream job. Fantastic. The very first thing they had us do was not to research stories, but to shoot this promo, which was The Investigators. Uncovering the truth, getting results, protecting you. And they had a film crew and a smoke machine, and we were silhouetted. Investigative reporter Steve. One of the first stories that Jane came up with was the uh, revelation that most of the milk in the state of Florida and throughout much of the country uh, was adulterated with the effects of bovine growth hormone, the artificial hormone that farmers were injecting into their cows so that they would produce more milk. With Monsanto, I didn't realize how effectively a corporation could work to get something on the marketplace. The levels of coordination they had to have. They had to get university professors into the fold. They had to get experts into the fold. They had to get reporters into the fold. They had to get the public into the fold. And of course the FDA, let's not leave them out. They had to get the federal regulators convinced that this was a fine and safe product um, to get it onto the marketplace. And they did that. They did that very, very well. It's a great time to be a high-producing cow. Pozilac One Step, bovine somatotropin by Monsanto. The federal government basically rubber-stamped it before they put it on the marketplace. The longest test they did for human toxicity was 90 days on 30 rats. Pozilac is the single most tested new product in history and is now available to you specifically so you can increase your profit potential. And then either Monsanto misreported the results to the FDA or the FDA didn't bother to look in depth at Monsanto's own studies. The scientists within Health Canada looked very carefully at bovine growth hormone and came to very different conclusions than the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. did. Monsanto's engineered growth hormone did not comply with safety requirements. It could be absorbed by the body and therefore did have implications for human health. Mysteriously, that conclusion was deleted from the final published version of their report. They knew there were problems. They saw serious potential human health problems and they stood up in Canada and said, we're not going to approve this because we don't believe it's safe. We have been pressured and coerced to pass drugs of questionable safety, including the RBST. I personally was very concerned that there's a very serious problem of secrecy, conspiracy, and uh, things of that nature, uh, and something needs to be done. The FDA was then on the hot seat. They had to come up with an answer. They didn't come up with a good one. And they never took the opportunity then. I mean, what would they do? Pull it off the market and say, we need to now do the job that we didn't do the first time? They didn't do that. We wrote the story. We had it ready a week beforehand. 
They had bought ads. Farmers in the milk industry say it's safe, but studies suggest a link to cancer. Don't miss this special report from the investigation. That Friday night before the Monday the series was to begin, the fax machine spit out a letter from this very high-priced lawyer in New York that Monsanto had hired. It contained a lot of things that were just off the wall false, just demonstrably false. But if you didn't know the story and you didn't know how we had gone about producing it, uh, would have scared you as a broadcaster, as a manager. And they decided that they would pull the story and they would just check it one more time. But the bottom line was that there was no factual errors in that story. Uh, both sides had been heard from, both sides had had an opportunity to speak. One week later, Monsanto sent the second letter. And this was even more strongly worded. And it said there will be dire consequences for Fox News if the story airs in Florida. And this time they freaked. They were afraid of being sued, and they were also afraid of losing advertising dollars at all of the stations owned by Rupert Murdoch. And he owned more television stations than any other group in America. I mean, that's 22 television stations. That's a lot of advertising dollars for Roundup, Aspartame, NutraSweet, and uh, other products. So we got into a battle, and uh, the first deal was uh, the new general manager. And his name's Dave, and Dave is a salesman, and, you know, he'd pump your hand. How you doing? How you doing? He called us upstairs to his office, and he said, um, what would you say if I killed this piece? What if it never ran? And we said, well... You know, we wouldn't be very happy about that. And he said, well, I could kill it, you know. And we said, yes, of course, you're the manager. You could kill it. It, it would never air. And uh, he's hemming and he's hawing and he's back and he's forth. And we couldn't figure out what is this all about. And finally he blurted out, look, would you tell anybody? You know, I said, I'm not going to lie for you. About a week later, calls us back to the office and says, okay, we'd like you to make these changes. In fact, you will make these changes. We said, well, look, let us show you the research that we have that shows that this information you want us to broadcast isn't true. To which he replies, I don't care about that. I said, pardon me? And he said, uh, well, that's what I have lawyers for. Just write it the way the lawyers want it written. I said, you know, this is news. This is important. This is stuff people need to know. And I'll never forget, he didn't pause a beat, and he said, we just paid $3 billion for these television stations. We'll tell you what the news is. The news is what we say it is. I said, I'm not doing that. And he said, well, he said, if you refuse to present this story the way we think it should be presented, you'll be fired for insubordination. I said, I will go to the Federal Communications Commission and I will report that I was fired from my job by you, the licensee of these public airwaves, because I refused to lie to people on the air. And uh, it's thank you very much. Uh, you'll hear from us right away. Well, 24 hours came and went. And we didn't hear a thing. And about a week later, he calls us back, and now we've changed strategies. How about if we pay you some money and you just go away? And I said, how much money? Because, you know, when somebody offers to bribe you like that, I always want to know if it might be worth it. He was going to offer us the rest of our year's salary if we agreed not to talk about what Monsanto had done, to not talk about the Fox corporate response in suppressing the story, and to not talk about the story. Not talk about BGH, again, anywhere. Not take the story to, and he said, are you gonna sign? And we said, nah, Dave, we're not gonna sign that. And he said, well, send it back, okay? I said, no, nah, Dave, we're not gonna send that back. It was, okay, we can't buy you out. We can't shut you up. Let's get the story on the air in a way that we can all agree it will go on the air. And we started rewriting and editing with their lawyers. Well, during this eight-month re-review process, I say, jokingly, uh, they did things like, for example, they wanted to take out the word cancer. You don't have to identify what the potential problem is. But just say human health implications. Any criticism of Monsanto or its product, they either removed it or minimized it. And it was very, very clear, I would say, almost every edit they made to the piece, that was the aim. And we changed this and this and this, and then that wasn't good enough. Okay, now change this and this and this. Now change this and this. Version after version after version, 83 times. 
83 times is unheard of. It doesn't happen. You shouldn't have to rewrite something 83 times. Obviously, they didn't want to put the thing on the air. And they were trying to drive us crazy and get us to quit or wait until the first window in our contract so that they could fire us. They, in effect, announced that they were going to fire us uh, for no cause. Well, this was a little much. And Steve wrote a letter to the lawyer in Atlanta, whose name is Carolyn Forrest, the Fox corporate lawyer. And I said, you know, this isn't about being fired for no cause. You're firing us because we refused to put on the air something that we knew and demonstrated to be false and misleading. That's what this is about. And because we put up a fight, because we stood up to this big corporation and we stood up to your editors and we stood up to your lawyers and we said to you, look, there ought to be a principle higher than just making money. Look at the pyramid. In the first couple layers, the really eager, hard-working young journalists are out there trying to get the stories, trying to make a name so they can move up that pyramid. Well, the further they move up the pyramid, uh, the more they realize that, uh, you know, the outlets really aren't interested in major news that rocks the boat. The boat Charles refers to belongs to those at the top of the pyramid, where the interests of the media outlets are quietly defined. All right, I know many of you aren't very shocked and very surprised by what you have just seen, how the media corrupt, how NBC lie, the national baloney communist company, with lying luster and lying Brian. We talked about lying Brian years ago, didn't we, on our radio programs. And here on The Deadly Experiment, we talked about lying Brian. Well, he was a liar. He was exposed and he was demoted. So, you know, Lying Lester is just a cue card reader. He's a teleprompter reader, like the local yokel idiots that we see on our local stations. They can read pretty well, yeah, they can see pretty good, and they can certainly read the script. But it's what goes behind the camera that is important. What you are allowed to see and what you are not allowed to see. Let me give you an example. An example of this whole business of vaccinations and flu shots has angered me to no end because I have never received a flu shot in my life and never would have not been sick with the flu. And the reasons are, number one, we give glory and, and honor to the Heavenly Father for keeping us safe, recovering me from the cancer that I had and healing me three times. This is God's word, God's blessing. But more importantly, God gave us foods and plant life and herbs and spices and oils to live off of that we might be healthy. And what do we do? We go to the pharmacists. We go to the pharmakia, which in the Greek, in the Bible, pharmakia really is pharmacy. It is, it is the drug merchants of the world, not those on the street. They're not the real problem. It's the legal medical profession, which is trained and owned and operated by corrupt pharmaceutical big pharma. They have made people's immune system very sick, very weak, and very compromised. And we see that in these segments on Monsanto and how Fox News was used. Now, CNN doesn't even appear in these segments for the most part because CNN is so far out of the ballpark. It's known as the Communist Nitwit Network. It is radical beyond anybody's description. Anderson Pooper and people like that, whatever their names are, they're just a dime a dozen. Uh, Israeli owned, no question about that. Avi Novo and a group of other uh, investors to deceive people on the radical left and people center left. Fox does the same with the right. So no matter what, you're getting two sides of the same coin. The same coin, which is a counterfeit coin. So now you, you're understanding the basics of medicine. Medicine is totally corrupt. My doctor, one of them told me, you're right, it's absolutely corrupt. So people who are dying, young people, particularly of the flu, we're told, are not dying necessarily just from the flu. They're dying from the vaccinations they've already received at childhood. Many of the vaccines contain pathogens. That's poisons that go into them. Buffers that weaken the body's immune system. And that's why particularly young people will get sick. Their immune systems have not fully developed yet. Uh, their bodies are not strong enough yet, even at, even at their preteen years, and the elderly as well. I have never received a vaccination with a flu shot in my life. Now, we do know that the Sabin vaccine, the Sabin vaccine that was given to us, uh, 
by Mr. Well, we, we know a lot about that, don't we? The little shot we got or the cube, the sugar cube when we were in school, many of us of our generation, to supposedly eliminate the chance of polio, which was a massive hoax on the American people. Of course it was. We know that the persons behind it were in fact tied into the Rothschild and Rockefeller medical cabal. Ever since those inoculations and subsequent inoculations, cancer has grown in America as never before. We have never seen so many young people getting cancer today as we are seeing now. Between what is in the vaccinations, what is in the buffers, what is in the, there, the pathogens that are in there, even those that claim they do not have those poisons like squalene and so on and so forth, we're seeing the, the accumulation in the tissue of toxicity and poison leading to a breakdown of the immune system. Now, I don't claim to be a medical doctor, but I know that God's medicine is superior to man's medicine. That I know, and the doctors most invariably will agree with me. Oil of oregano is something that is God's holy oil. And I take the extra strength oil, which is sold by, I'm not going to promote them, I can't. But it's sold by a particular doctor who helped me get back to health. Under the tongue, the drops, the blue bottle, oil of oregano, P73 is the strongest. It wipes out wipes out various infections in the body, bacterium infections, even viral as well. And most of all, fungus, which can lead to cancer and the breakdown of the immune system. That's what was happening with me. So folks, the media will not talk about it. Go to Channel 10, the team you should never trust, or any of them, and you ask them, have you ever done a segment on oil of oregano? They'll say, what's that? They never even heard of it. They don't know and they don't care. Who advertises on the networks and the stations, big pharma and the big automa- you know, the automobile companies and the, you know, the showcase of cars and all sorts of gadgets and gadgets and uh, wherewithal that people love to be deceived by and love to engage in the purchase of on their credit cards because they have no liquidity. My friends, America is broke. Most of the nation's governments of the world are bankrupt. They're in, obviously in debt to the bankster gangsters, once again, those who own the media. Folks, we're almost out of time today. The important thing, which you should remember, is that we are living in the very end of an age, the 70th year since the evil fig tree generation. In the book, In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, Jesus called the apostles and said, Learn the parable of the fig tree, the evil fig tree planted in Jerusalem. When was it planted? In 1948. It would be 70 years or so before the very end following that planting of that tree. 2018 is the 70th year. Bear that in mind. Things are moving very rapidly downhill. Folks, we're out of time. Rerun these programs. Search out and seek the truth for yourself. Till the next program, part two, Rick Adams, your host and producer for The Deadly Experiment, saying goodbye and Yahweh bless his elect.